afternoon, everyone, and welcome to BC Season 3. Today's webinar will be a webinar focused on photography and media. If you guys are new to our program, Virtual Student Experiences is a pro bono initiative spearheaded for students by students. And we at Virtual Student Experiences want to be the inspiration for aspiration. Our goal is to give students around the world an opportunity to hear from professionals in their career industry, uh, industry of interest in a friendly and casual setting. And if you're a student and knows what you want to do in the future, we at VSC want to encourage, allow, and connect with professionals. Through VSC, students are given the chance to decide if their career choice fits their personality, skills, and overall interests. Through VSC, you'll be able to hear from a wide variety of guests from a wide variety of seniority levels. To find out more information and sign up to be notified about other webinars, you can visit our website at www.virtualstudentexperiences.com. Without further ado, our very special guest today is Mr. Nick Cruz. Mr. Nick Cruz started his educational journey at the University of California, San Francisco, where he obtained his Bachelor of Arts in Communication Sciences. Following that, he got a job as a content creator for Borderline Hollywood Media Co., where he got experience in media production and publicity. After a few other jobs, Nick founded his own company, where he now focuses on photography in the fashion industry. He has also created content for popular brands such as Spotify Music and Aldo Shoes. We're very happy to have you here today. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Cruz. Cool, guys. Thanks for having me, man. That was a great introduction. Awesome. And then just to start us off, can you, can you tell us from your perspective what photography is and really how you got into that field? Um, yeah, my perspective. Um, you know, in fashion, like it, it really has to do with the client. Um, so it's you know, really their mission statement um, and helping bring that to life for them. Um, I'm moving also into weddings uh, and photography. That's, that's a lot of emotion. Uh, you know, that's creating images for, you know, you want to create images for a brand for sure a hundred years, but for a couple, that, that's a different deal where you want to make something that's timeless, um, you know, for the next generation. For sure. Um... And I guess when you were trying to get into this industry, were there any sort of steps that you had to take or, I mean, what were the requirements that you really had to meet? Um, yeah, you kind of broke up there, but you, the question was kind of like, um, what requirements do you need to like be a photographer? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the barriers, they call them barriers to entry. They're, they're low. Uh, <laughs> You know, it takes a lot of drive and fortitude, um, but you probably have friends like, buddy, how old are you? 18. You're 18. I mean, you and you guys like create content constantly, like on your iPhones. Um, you probably have friends with a nice camera or access to a camera. And like that, that is the start of it. Um, you know, a nice camera, like a DSLR or mirrorless A7 you can get for $1,200. And that's your barrier to entry right there. Um, you know, if you can do that and you have a part-time job, like in high school, you can start and see if you want to be a photographer very, very soon. Um, you know, the rest is just building a business that is profitable um, and profitable. <laughs> that definitely changes if you start when you're 20 in college or at 18, you know, you're entering college. Um, profitable, like the line to be profitable is, is fine. You know, you only have to make $30,000 or something like that when you're in college. But when you're 28 in 10 years, you know, buddy, you might have a, a fiance or something, you know, <laughs> and you want to buy a house. And so being profitable, it has to match that. Like in Hawaii, it's really expensive to live. In California, it's really expensive to live. Yeah. Um, so the barrier to entry is, is easy. You know, it's not much uh, computer programming, Lightroom, I'm sure everybody's heard of. Um, you know, the software is really cheap. The, the computer hardware is it's not too expensive either. It's maybe thousand, two thousand dollars $2,000. You know, um, it's more of the fortitude to keep going. You know, mm -hmm. and when it's other definitely. friends are just, they're kind of, they get tired of it. Mm -hmm. I guess that's like sort of a segue into the next question. With social media and really thousands of new influences per year, like how do you, make yourself stand out as a creator? Um, you know, I think it's the consistency. I think it's consistency and knowing 
what you want to make and how you want to make it. Um, you know, I think making pictures is one thing, but then when it gets more complex and you deal with a client, um, there's many angles that they want to cover. Um, and I think that there's a lot of human touch in that. So it's not just going out and making pictures, um, you know, even as an influencer, like that's kind of one angle and one aspect, um, the social media side to it. Um, well, you might make something different. You know, the influencer will make content that they were gifted or that they're paid to promote, but then you can't really use that influencer content to be an ad, mm -hmm. you know, and to explore other markets, um, especially the influencer themselves might limit you to only one market, you know, white, blonde, female from California is only going to reach so many people, mm -hmm. um, which is weird to say, but, uh, but yeah, in, it, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's the, the same thing, consistency and drive. Um, yeah, it, it, but it is tough. I'm not going to lie. Like, as you, you, you know, if the barrier to entry is only $2,000, mm -hmm. it's going to be a very tough market to, uh, sure. to um, compete, compete in. And I guess focusing in on your, your education more, can you speak about like, the role that that plays to your success? And really, how important is it to go to a name school or get consistent, really, really good grades? Um, how important is it to go to a name school? You know, at 18, yeah, you really, I would still recommend going to a good name school if you can. Um, you know, I think it, the, just the base that it, that it has you working with. Um, you know, some people, this is kind of an, like a sidebar, but some people, they think that um, in America, the, the college system is kind of like a class system. Um, so, you know, somebody going to Cal State Long Beach in California compared to somebody going to Stanford, like sure, those might be really differently smart people, um, but they also might have the same SAT scores, GPA, extracurricular activities. Um, and I'm, I just, I think if you can go to a school like that, like Stanford, of course, of course, man, or even something like Michigan, Berkeley, blah, 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 NYU. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that'll help. And I don't think you even need to specialize in photography in through college. You know, I didn't. Um, so yeah, as a photographer, I think doing business or doing communications or marketing, um, you know, and you have an interest in photography is, is fine. Um, but I definitely think, um, you know, a name school would be better, but if you research and you're like, they have some good photography teachers, professors, art classes that you could take um, or marketing classes that are digital focused, um, state school would be, would be fine. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I guess like in terms of lessons and things that you learned from school, um, can you tell us about some of the most important things that you took away from that time in college and I guess what helped you most in your career? Um, lessons and, uh, um yeah would you ask the lessons and uh, lessons and um key takeaways key takeaways from school specifically mm -hmm. uh geez i mean i guess i was a communications major um so i, I kind of had a lot of internships you know uh i worked for a couple production companies and pr agencies in movies and that's kind of how I got into filmmaking mm -hmm. um, and then in the end being a photographer. Um, but key takeaways, I don't know. I think it's, it's, it's more like learning marketing in like kind of the meta standpoint of why it even exists um, rather than the impl implementation. Because when I was in college, like adding social media onto your marketing plan was kind of like a, was an add on rather than the main focus mm -hmm. um so we so i'm glad my school at least taught like the meta reason like the the mythology behind marketing communication in general because mm -hmm. um, the the tools changed just so rapidly you know yeah, for sure that's pretty interesting 
And I guess, can you talk about some of the things that you did in college to like really help set you up and prepare you for your first few jobs? Uh, my, my internships, I think, you know, um, I worked for a couple big, big, big production studios um, and having those on my resume got me my first job for sure. Um, the first job was working for a guy named Steven Seagal and his production company. Uh, your parents might know him, but even then he's not a, he was not a very good action star. Um, and uh, yeah, working with a, as an internship in the studio, the kind of studio production world, got me my first job on the lot at, uh, at Universal Studios, which was pretty cool. Um, just because I knew the lingo and I knew how movies worked um, enough, just to, just enough to get you in the door. And then, and then you get there and you don't really know anything, which is fine. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Um, and I guess in terms of uh, your experiences, can you touch on your role as a content creator for Borderline Hollywood Media Co? And then like, what were your responsibilities and what was your day-to-day -day like? Um, yeah, I mean, my first job I think was 2010. So that's 11 years ago. Uh, I was shooting behind the scenes stuff which, which everybody sees now. Um, and uh, yeah, it was behind the scenes. So I was literally on set on these action movie sets with, you know, sitting in cars, like hanging outside of cars and outside of vans and stuff, getting behind the scenes, which is really big now, which is really cool. Um, but uh, yeah, and I was kind of the coordinator for the behind the scenes. Like back then it was like the DVD coverage, like mm -hmm. the bonus extra stuff. Um, now it's just on YouTube um, but yeah we would just do interviews with the which each of the actors and the writers and the directors and all that stuff um, so I did that for like a year and a half and uh, yeah that was a that was a manager kind of job and then also hands-on shooting the actual video um, well, sounds sounds pretty cool and interesting I mean you got to interact with all the people on the set um, yeah and then I guess yeah. now, can you speak about your role as the, as the founder of your own company, Nick Cruz Photography, and I guess um, how it's worked with the pandemic and everything? Um, you know, as you've probably experienced, like schools still shut down, like in, in very much so. Um, there wasn't really any work from March to July. There just wasn't, you know, in terms of uh, some branding, it was minimal. And then uh, I was moving into weddings in July. And weddings, as you've seen in culture, just they don't really exist anymore unless people are like totally flouting the law and and uh, kind of safety regulations yeah. <laughs> um, and having 150 people at a wedding. So yeah, yeah, I was like everybody else where it kind of shut down and then it's trickling back in, um, but yeah very rare hopefully it never ever happens again uh, yeah i mean it's it's definitely an interesting experience can you maybe talk about um pre-pandemic what business was like then uh business was good it was good yeah i had returning clients and referrals from clients um which is the best possible thing uh to have mm -hmm. you know for sure and then yeah in terms of in terms of like skills and things that um you would recommend that students start to develop. Um, what would you say are your top three skills that you use every day? Top three skills? <clears throat> I mean, I think editing, using using Lightroom, using Photoshop, for sure, to a degree, they, they should be sufficient at it. Um, but I think like a big, a bigger skill is like, is storytelling, um, mm. which if kids are interested in like creating content, um, you know, via reels, via, via TikTok, like that's just storytelling. That's all it is. Whether it's funny and somebody eating crap on the floor, like it, it doesn't matter. It's a story. Um, yeah. So that, that's a huge, huge, huge skill. Like how much you actually want to storytell. Um, and then, you know, having a good eye and training your eye. So uh, training your eye, having a camera on you also helps, even if it's your iPhone, like that, that's, sufficient mm -hmm. and then any other skills that they should 
like looking to start developing, whether it be um, something in your personal or something that they can look up online, like a hard skill? A hard skill. Um, something they can look online. Yeah, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I think uh, learning some sort of sales, I think is if they want to read a sales book, um, they could totally do that. Um, you know, I could maybe provide you with some links later, but they're, they're famous books on sales because it's just learning about people and how they, how they interact. And um, as a photographer, it, definitely in an art school, like or in photography school or courses, they don't, they don't teach you that stuff. And, um, you know, you might be a wonderful photographer, but if you can't get a client, then mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. And it's a tough thing to, to, uh, to learn. Yeah, for sure. And I guess in terms of like words of aspiration or suggestions for uh, students that are aspiring to go into photography, um, what would you say to them? Um, a kid that's probably looking into being a photographer, I would just say continue taking pictures mm -hmm. and um, definitely don't be afraid to like dabble in video, to dabble in creating reels, using all the new tools like for sure, continue, continue building on that and ask your friends for help. Like absolutely take pictures of your friends, make videos of your friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's truly how it all starts. And you just get better and better and better. Um, yeah. Build a little team around you. Like that's what I'm doing now uh, is having an editor and uh, having my, my wife's a copywriter and a, and a branding manager. So you know, the more you do, the more, the bigger you get, you're actually, the less, you know, hands-on you kind of get, which is, is dangerous, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I guess a um, question from the audience is like, is there a particular perspective or a way at looking at scenarios that only a photographer would tend to see? Um, a particular way or it's a scenario, scenario. Um, yeah, I guess you just kind of listen you the weather if you're at a wedding you know you listen um and, and try to try to feel how people are which is a weird thing to think about um but for weddings yeah like i try to have a really peaceful presence in a wedding um you know because it's such a, an emotional experience um yeah like be really be aware of like i guess people would say the energy you bring into a room um because for weddings you can totally change it in a good way or a bad way, uh, but definitely watch the bad way. Um, and then uh, on set, you know, just making people comfortable, especially like you know, in a commercial kind of world. Um, COVID's just a new thing. Um, you know, wearing a mask really sucks on set, trying to work, uh, yeah. especially when you're even talking with a model. She, you know, she's a professional and she's paid to be there, but still you have to like, break through this barrier and create a relationship with them um, just enough to like get what the client needs for sure and i guess in terms of your photography style can you describe that and how it's evolved and changed as you've progressed and i guess how should someone that's just starting out start to develop that style um you know definitely shoot a lot shoot in all different styles um so that's like shoot really dark and moody stuff and shoot really bright and beach-like stuff. Um, you know, shoot, shoot motion, shoot out of focus, shoot film, um, see how you interact with it all. Um, and, uh, and then kind of ask for critiques, you know, kind of just continue to ask for critiques. You know, I think some of the most valuable stuff I've received is like, uh, not like, oh my God, this is beautiful. Like, I love this because like after a while, like ask people how those pictures make them feel. Um, and you can use that in advertising or you can use that in, um, you know, in weddings too. Uh, yeah, and to learning your style, your signature style, like you can have a signature style for like for weddings um, and you can have one for branding, but honestly, like, in commercial, um, 
I read, I watched this video a while back. Or is this really famous photographer and he shoots all this stuff for um, like big TV shows, mm -hmm. big movies, like the cover posters. Um, so like Breaking Bad, he shot all that stuff and The Sopranos and movies like that. And they're all a little different, like the posters. Um, and he's like, but I have a tough time shooting like Charmin toilet paper. Because it's not, because like Charmin toilet paper is like bright and bubbly and clean and whatever. And he's like, I, I'm, I'm an artist. I can, I can conform to that look if they need me to, you know, just need a little direction and I got it. Um, so in, in terms of just developing your style, like definitely develop it. But the goal for me is to be able to shoot anything in exactly how that person wants it. Um, That's definitely, and I guess like, how, how do you get the person like place or thing that's in front of the camera into the view frame and like just the way that you want it? Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, I think a lot of trial and error for mm -hmm. sure. Um, you know, on set, you probably take, I mean, thousands of pictures, you know, thousands of pictures. And then with the help of an editor and, and a person of Photoshop um, and a, a retoucher on top of that, you know, it, it takes a lot of like guiding, guiding the spaceship home, you know, mm -hmm. it's like feeding the earth in the window when you like, you're trying to fly it yourself because if you miss it, you're off into yeah for sure or something and then last question just focusing again on a little bit of education um, what courses or clubs should students start to look at taking and i guess what's the typical path that a successful photographer such as yourself takes yeah um you know i would take some classes uh in high school like i i took a i took a couple classes in high school um, a couple classes in high school and then in college, you know, um, take a couple classes and then shoot with your friends too. Like, I, I think you can be pretty successful, um, maybe shooting for small brands in, uh, in college and, uh, really just getting your shoot rate up. Like how many pictures you're actually taking, how much video you're, you're creating, um, for people. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and then yeah, in college, I mean, and especially when COVID opens up, like I was a part of a lot of um, social groups and community groups, like around photographers and videographers um, that would meet up. And, you know, it's, it's really simple. Like people would just rent a studio space in downtown LA, for example, um, they would rent it for say four hours and they would invite people from, you know, Facebook groups, um, photographers meet up LA or something on Facebook and uh, you'd sign up and pay 20 bucks and meet a bunch of other photographers and there'd be like three models and so you photograph the models and you know that's a good in-person thing that's not possible right now but yeah. Um, but yeah that's a that's a good casual way to get started um, and you can kind of see that like oh some people have full-time jobs and they, they do photography on the side or you can see other people like yourself, if you want to go full time, um, so you kind of connect with them and uh, and, and get started. Yeah, I mean uh, that's really great. Thank you so much for um, sharing all of your tips, tricks, and uh, all of your knowledge from your background and your experiences. I really appreciate you taking out your time of your day to um, come and chat with me and um, share all of that. No problem, buddy. Um, oh, actually, one question. Mm -hmm. Or not a question suggestion like if there's any photographers or videographers like watching this one way i would start i would start just interviewing um photographers you admire and videographers you admire people in the industry um because i think they'd be flattered you know you know i feel so old talking to you and i think they would be so flattered um definitely like have you heard of clubhouse i have yeah get on clubhouse it's like super new um I think people would people would love it. Uh, you can introduce yourself, and the, the barrier to entry there is like so low. Um, you can talk to the biggest photographers and videographers in the world. So that would be pretty cool. That's what I would do. I would be like, "Hey, I don't know anything. 
can you ask, can you answer these couple questions? And then they'll give you, and they'd love it. They, they would die. Awesome. I mean, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, yeah. Have a nice rest of your night. Thank you so much.